guys in a couple of different countries have a couple of beers and discuss a stadium somewhere in the world and their experiences there. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And we are happy to be here with you tonight. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the Stadium Journey YouTube channel, like this video, and leave comments. The official Stadium Journey review of today's venue can be found at www.stadiumjourney.com or the link can be found in the comments below. So let's get rolling. Dave, what are you drinking today? So today I have uh, an old favorite, definitely one from my my university days. Um, I would say it would it was the beer that sort of opened the door to new possibilities for me because I, you know, as a as a youngster, it was always the same same sort of thing, which was what was ever in in the fridge. Um, so uh, this was my my first real trip into trip into uh, what at that time was was craft beer or microbrew. Now, since, of course, this company has been bought by Molson's because Molson buys everything. So today I have the Rickards Red, one of the two beers on tap at Morty's Pub, my most favorite hangout when I was in university. Nice. And uh, let's see, I just got back. If, if you are regular listeners to the Stadium Journey podcast family of shows, you know that I just got back from North Carolina. And on one of our days, we actually went up to a little town called Chimney Rock and uh, climbed a mountain. Well, I don't know if you call it a mountain. Chimney Rock, yeah, it's a mountain. You can uh, go up to the top, climb the rock, and get to see for miles and miles. Of course, when we were there, it rained, so we couldn't see for miles and miles, maybe one mile. But at the bottom of the state park near the entrance is was this fantastic uh, beer pub that we found in the pouring rain. We said, you know what? The heck with walking through this touristy trap of a town. Let's go in to have a couple beers. We just climbed a mountain. We deserve it. Actually, we didn't climb the mountain. We climbed like three sets of stairs to get to the top of the mountain. <laughs> well, that's a whole other story. But anyway, the place we found was right on the shores of a stream, um, had a porch overlooking this, the stream. It was, as um, Ted would say in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, it was most tranquil. So it was a great hang. And we were at, of course, I'm talking about Hickory Nut Gorge Brewery. And what I have here is their Broad River Blonde Ale. Fantastic. And, and an amazing setting. If you want pictures, I can uh, show you the pictures too. Very, very awesome time. So if you were visiting today's destination, you might be drinking an Oyster Bay Honey Ale from Oyster Bay Brewery, Oyster Bay, the hometown of one Billy Joel. Because today we're talking about City Field, the home of the New York Mets. Before we dive in, let's take a look at the stadium vitals. All right, uh, so Dave, back in the year uh, 2009, the city of New York decided that they were going to build a couple of baseball stadiums. Uh, they, and for a combined price of $1.625 million, they got the new Yankee billion. Stadium. Billion. billion? Yes. One, yeah. Yankee Stadium alone was a billion. <laughs> yeah, City Field got the short end of the stick. It was uh, only $600 million. Uh, but anyway, the reviews were less than stellar. Is the criticism of City Park deserved? City Field, sorry. Well, I think uh, I think there are a couple things uh, at play here. Uh, number one, uh, it was a, a the New York ballparks were a, a parting gift of one now infamous Rudy Giuliani, who sort of just snuck those in on his way out. And I'm not entirely sure that uh, the locals were overly pleased with that, especially when you're in a New York market and it's not like they can threaten. I mean. I guess back in the day, George Steinbrenner threatened to move the Yankees to New Jersey. But in, in 2009, there was no chance that anyone was going to be moving out of a New York market. So <laughs> where were you going to go to uh, Jacksonville? Yeah, all that all that public money, I think, was was not necessarily well spent. Um, the Yankee Yankee Stadium has a, a whole host of their own issues uh, where and I would say that the old one was a, a lot more beloved than the new one. And the Mets sort of went in an entirely different direction. You know, they had they were coming out of Shea. Shea was one of those one of those donut cookie cutters, uh, and they did something totally different. So, 
you know, physically, City Field became definitely an improvement on Shea. Uh, I think, I think New Yorkers um, who are Mets fans grasped on to Shea because it was theirs, and and you know, there's that animosity between Yankee fans and Mets fans. But I think one of the things that they did that might have taken a while to to be embraced was they didn't focus on Met history. They focused, they focused on, I believe, Giants history and Dodgers history. So uh, City Field was built as this, maybe not replica, but an homage to Ebbets right. Field. Right. Uh, which, you know, eh. Which have was a, in Brooklyn, not yeah, Queens. It, do, it doesn't have a, a lot of lot to do with Mets history. Um, the 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 big entrance way, which which is is very nice, is yes. the Jackie Robinson rotunda, and I, I understand you know Jackie Robinson as a as a New Yorker, uh, and definitely not a Yankee, um, but he wasn't a Met. He, he that that connection to the Mets isn't there. Right. I mean, at least with with like Willie Mays, you could you could say that Willie Mays did sort of make an appearance with the Mets right at the end there, uh, but but Jackie Robinson didn't have that, so I think right off it it kind of got off on the, on a on a bad foot, um, and it was also kind of at the the back end of of the big stadium kind of boom right, so you had um, Progressive Field in Cleveland that was built, you had uh, the Great American Ballpark. You had PNC Park. Those were all done. They all had, you know, things that people loved about them. And then, and then there was City Field. And I'm not sure. I, and I think we talked about this when we talked about St. Louis. What what did they bring to the table that was original? I, the Jackie Robinson Rotunda was definitely original, but not necessarily original Mets. Right. And uh, another criticism of the ballpark when it first opened in was there was no mention of the Mets anywhere. I mean, yeah, you had the Jackie Robinson Rotunda with the giant 42 in the lobby. Uh, you do have the nice Mets Hall of Fame there. I don't know if that was there originally. I, I was there in 2009 and I do not remember the the Mets Hall of Fame there at all. Yeah, I thought that was a, a later arrival. And now they have banners of current players and and some of your Mets legends like Tom Seaver and uh, you know some of the 86 Mets and stuff hanging on the outside of the ballpark but when it opened none of that was there and we can go into some things that they've done now to kind of give it more of a Mets flavor but yeah at the beginning you're absolutely right none of that stuff was there and this is despite the fact that it was built just a few feet away from the outfield fence at Shea Stadium yeah, I went to uh, I did go to Shea in in 2008. So we made our our ballpark stop in in New York City in in 08. Caught a game at the old Yankee Stadium in its last season. Caught a game at Shea in its last season. I, I must admit I had way more fun at Shea than I did at Yankee Stadium. Uh, but when we were there, it was one of these deals where they they chopped a hole in the donut, and uh, you could see. Yep. yep you could see city field being built. Um, you know, the one thing that, that they did bring, uh, with it, uh, actually I, did they bring it or did they improve it? Uh, was the apple, the home run apple. All right. I was going to touch on that. The apple for city field is a new apple. It's a larger apple. Okay. But the original apple is located right outside of the main entrance to the ballpark. So you can go and it's a great spot to meet. If you're meeting up with people, you can meet there, take pictures. It's a fantastic photo op spot right in between where the subway gets off and the entrance. So every all the people who are coming in from the subway are walking right by the old Apple from Shea Stadium. And to have that outside landmark is is such a is such a big deal. Um, wherever you go, whether you're you know Los Angeles at, at, at the Angels, you know you meet me at the Big A or the Big Hats or or whether it's in Pittsburgh, you know, meet me at Willie Stargell or Roberto Clemente or, or wherever, um, you know, those, those big meeting parts, they, they give a sense of, of, you know, here, this is where you go in. And, uh, and I think it, 
you know, I think it helps when you're, when you're coming from, you know, the, the donut, which does not have that main wow entrance. And, you know, the, the Mets really want you to, to do the wow entrance, which, which we did. We went, uh, I, I distinctly remember, you know, riding up that escalator on in the Jackie Robinson rotundo and going, wow, this is, this is pretty nice. Yeah, it is a really nice entry point, no doubt. But that 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 connection to Ebbets Field, I, I don't know. I, I I think it was a stretch. Um, yes. Obviously, sure. not being a, a native New Yorker, I'm not sure if they were able to to catch some of those those old time fans. You know, like Mark's mom, who was a, a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, and 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 our our friend Mark would say, you know, where where are the Mets? Why why is this all Jackie Robinson and, and Dodgers and Ebbets Field? Where where are the Mets? And, uh, you know, maybe it's New York, but um, there aren't too many ballparks anymore that don't have that don't have a big statue of somebody. Uh, but, you know, the Mets are one, you know, with True. with the, the recent uh, passing of Tom Seaver. Does that change things? You know, yeah. if there's if there's one Met who, you know, probably would be front in line if you were to do a statue. I think it would be, I think it would be Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver would be one, and, one and two <laughs> on that list. I think <laughs> uh, one thing that they do have to mark Shea stadium. And I don't know if a lot of people know this, but they have markers in the parking lot on the spots where the four bases at Shea stadium were and the pitching rubber. So as, as a Red Sox fan, you know, one time during one of my visits to Shea stadium, I want, I found, the bases and I trudged on down over to first base and went about 15, 20 feet behind first base and just kind of looked down and started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, it was like a sad memorial for a Red Sox fan in Shea. <laughs> well, I know you missed out on that one in 86, but I'm not sure you you're allowed to, uh, to be sad after winning all those other ones since. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we've more than made up for it, so I can't complain too much. But yeah, 86 still goes down as one of the uh, the biggest heartbreaks that a team's ever suffered. Although, although the Texas Rangers don't get their due for choking away the World Series against St. Louis that year. they That was a bigger choke jog than, than the Red Sox had because they were they had not one but two, if I recall correctly, two leads that they choked away in that game six. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we digress. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, when you go into Shea Stadium, not Shea Stadium, look at that still. How long <laughs> has it been? 12 years? <laughs> yeah. It's only been 12 years. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. But you, you go into City Field, you've got the magnificent Jackie Robinson Rotunda. You go up those escalators or the stairs if you're, you know, if you're more fit Spry. than most of us fans. And you've got this nice open concourse, which you don't see right away. But once you go a little bit to one side or the other, there it is. What's your first impression when you walk inside of City Field? Well, you know this the seating uh, the seating areas is much better, much much better. The the sight lines are the sight lines are for baseball, uh, and you know it, the, the comfort level is is much higher. Um, I'm not sure you're going to get that wow view. Uh, looking out. Well, on, what are you going to look at in Queens? The, uh, and... <laughs> yeah, the salvage, the auto salvage yards beyond the outfield there. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's you know that's a New York thing uh, that I think they tried to capture from, you know, from places like Pittsburgh and Cincinnati where it was, you know, the view, uh, San Francisco, right, where you you just you can't do it. There's there is not there's nothing to view. Um, even Yankee Stadium, you know, like. Apartments in the Bronx, okay, that's yeah. that's not doing it. That's not doing it. Um, <laughs> but you know, you were talking about uh, you know home plate and 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 the the bases and everything out in the parking lots. That's one thing that really puts it apart for me from Yankee Stadium is it's drivable. Yeah. So in in, in two thousand well, for New York when, City, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in two thousand nine when we went, we didn't stay in New York. We, I think we stayed in, uh, I think we stayed in Syracuse or something like that. And then, uh, if I remember correctly, we, you know, we drove east in, uh, the next morning, um, found an amazing children's museum in Utica, 
kids played like crazy because uh, there were like five kids in the whole place. It rained the day before, so everybody had gone the day before to be inside. And um, yeah, it, and we left there. Uh, the kids slept all the way to New York. <laughs> we went, parked, went to the game. And then hopped in the car, and I don't remember exactly where we stayed, but uh, I think we drove an hour to get out of the city, and and um, you know it, what we didn't have that that you know expense of staying in New York and and the hassle of having a car in New York and all of those kinds of things. Like so, it was for me, it was a much better um, travel arrangement. However, you know you pay for that, right? Like. What are you going to do after the game in Flushing? Go to the uh, subway. You're going to car. leave. Yes. Yeah. There's not. <laughs> there's not really much, much of anything around there. There is the United States Tennis Association, but yeah, if, if you're looking for a place to eat or something, and there's a nice marina not too far away, but yeah, as far as what to do right after the game, you're you're leaving. You're either right. hopping on the subway or hopping in your car, and you're going home. Yeah. And if you're looking at it from a micro, really micro standpoint, it's not a big tourist area. There's not a ton of things to do around there. You did, and, you know, you can go watch the U.S. Open, but I'm pretty sure that the Mets don't play at the same time when the tennis is going on. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it it did get a bad rap. Uh, it It is a significant improvement over Shea. Oh, um, Shea was horrible. <laughs> concessions oh my gosh you know new yorkers discovered uh shake shack and uh you can't get a, a whiff of that place you know with with less than a, a two inning lineup like the lineup at shake shack is is like crazy at least it was for a number of years i'm not sure if it's if it's still like that uh so a much more a much more well-rounded baseball experience i i would say um but, you know, they have to compare to all those ones that came before it and, and don't have the wow factor of of a of a Pittsburgh or a Cincy or, or places like that or a San Fran. And, and while a game at Citi Field is much more affordable than going to its crosstown rival in, in the Bronx, uh, it still can be pretty expensive. I know afford. Yeah, you said the parking. The one thing about when there's the only option to park is the lots right around the stadium. You're going to pay for it. So I think yeah, the last wow. time we went, it might have been 30 bucks or so. Your prime seats are very expensive, but that can be said about any ballpark nowadays. Uh, the upper deck is affordable, but the problem with some of the seats in the upper deck is you can't see all of the action. The way the seats, the way the field is and the way the seats are configured, you've got blind spots, which isn't the worst thing. A lot of ballparks have that same issue. Um, you've got the nice patio out in right field. I don't know if it's still called the Pepsi porch or if uh, it's been rechristened with a new sponsor. But I always enjoy myself at City Field. It's got a giant scoreboard with lots of information on it, which is always good. Uh, the new Apple, which is uh, bigger and better than the old Apple that sits outside. It, and Mr. Met runs around a little bit. You can, If you're lucky, you can catch him. And Mrs. Met, if you're really lucky. <laughs> so I like, I like the song. I yeah. like the the Meet the Mets song and something that they've kind of hung on to over the years. I mean, for me personally, you know, City Field is probably one that is, is due for a, a redo, um, as in a, a, a revisit for myself. I'm not saying that there are things that need to be redone. Maybe there are. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sure that, you know, since 2009, when I was there, uh, there are a few things that I, I kind of missed out on. Um, First and foremost, the, the Mets Hall of Fame. And, and yeah. you know, to add some things to that pregame experience uh, where, you know, you don't have a Utah street or a ballpark village or something like that. So if you are the team, you want to bring people in early so that they can spend money early. And you, you do have a bit of a captive audience there. Like, where else yeah. are they going to spend their money? Sure. So get them in early and give them something to see, give them something to do, um, to look at uh, before the game. And I think the Mets do a better job at that than a lot of other teams around the majors. 
uh, I know I have kind of, I have walked out of City Field more than once with my arms full of free t-shirts or different promotional items that they give away. So our family, our family Mets picture is uh, we went on, on Teddy Bear Day. So, um, you know, we got somebody to take a, a family picture. So it's uh, my wife and my son and myself. Um, my son has a little teddy bear. He's barely looking at the camera. And my daughter has like three because she's got hers and mine and my wife's. And she's just looking like this is the greatest thing ever because I have three. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, lots of lots of promos there. Uh, yeah, I think they they have to work harder than the Yankees do, right? Like they don't have that history. They don't have that. Well, they have history, but it's not that domineering sort of history that the Yankees do. And there's so many stumbling points in, in Mets history, history, even as, as recent as, you know, the, the Fred Wilpon, you know, Ponzi scheme uh, problems, right. Where, yeah. where the team sort of fell off and, and um, you know, had significant financial issues. Well, you know, I tell as, you, Oh, go ahead. As a, bit, thought, sorry. as a bit of an aside, some of this talk about, um, you know, getting rid of the DH and maybe rejigging everything. So if you get rid of the DH in baseball, do you need an American league and a national league, you know, to put the Mets and Yankees in the same division would be a travesty. And, and I think, being able to in in two days, being able to see National League Baseball, which I love, and American League Baseball, which is different, um, is a real is a real treat. So, you know, Rob Manfred, if you're listening, let the pitchers hit in the Nas National League. And I know to to end up comparing City Field and Yankee Stadium, it's kind of inevitable that the two parks are both in the same city. Both built at the same time. In my opinion, and this is only my opinion, I would choose City Field over Yankee Stadium almost every time. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I am. I'm abso absolutely with you. Uh, Yankee Stadium, I did go maybe a little bit more recently, and maybe I probably should go again. Um, but but wow, a, a super expensive um, ordeal in Yankee Stadium. Uh, they should be building a, a massive monument to to you know Derek Jeter and Joe Girardi and that crew that won a World Series in New Yankee Stadium because it was looking pretty sad when it opened with a lot of empty seats a lot of empty seats a lot of empty I can see them on TV seats yeah so yeah City Field in my my book um it's got the affordability over its crosstown rival and and it's got the fun factor I think it's more fun to go to a game of City Field yeah Yankee Stadium's got the history and the monuments and the museum there I can't miss. But you know what? Shea Stadium's definitely got a charm all its own. Um, I would not rank it in the top top 10 of my favorite ballparks. But you know what? It's right there on the edge with a whole bunch of other contenders. I definitely would not give it all the criticism that it's received. Absolutely. So there's our look at City Fields, uh, Stadium Journey Reviews. Check us out on our website, stadiumjourney.com. And we hope to see you at the ballpark real soon. Cheers. Cheers.